This is F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot show. I'm your moderator of this chat, Hiroja Shai. Please note that this podcast will have spoilers. In this chat, we will discuss the underlying themes, historical influences, inspirations, technology, ethical dilemmas, and other inspirational insights we have gleaned from each episode of the first season of Mr. Robot. We will be bringing on experts to share their insights and knowledge with us in each chat. We will also be reviewing each episode of the first season, as well as the second season when it premieres. We are awake, we are free, we are alive for F Society IRC Podcast. Hello, F Society IRC chat. This is your host, Hiroja Scheib, your moderator. And once again, we're here with a, a bit of a theory episode. This is more of a mini one. This is about Elliot. Is Elliot three different personalities? This is a theory that's been going around for quite some time since season one. Uh, often when you hear about Elliot being, a, being a, having a third personality, is often tied to Tywell Relic, a Wellick, I should say. Um, that's been kind of been disproven and spunk. It doesn't make uh, any kind of logical uh, sense uh, for the show for Tyra Wellick and Elliot to be uh, one and the same. But for Elliot to have a third personality, it does make sense. And given the revelations that we we've, we've had thus far on the show, first off, we know that Elliot is a broken person. He's a person who has some serious mental health issues. Uh, he has significant social anxiety. He goes off in kind of like his own personal space, his head space. He doesn't really relate well to people. While these are not obvious signs of mental illness, the fact that he has these grand delusions, uh, in particular, you know, envisioning his father as Mr. Robot, uh, a personality that we know takes over him in some cases, the various uh, gaps in time that he has uh, for missing three days is not the first time that Elliot has had um, unaccounted time where he can't account for his actions. Uh, that was a revelation we learned from the meeting of, between him and Darlene on Halloween when they went to when they sat down in his apartment and kind of go, you know, how does sister and brother talk about what's going on in their lives? We learned that Ellie didn't remember destroying the surfers. We also find another revelation where, given the last episode, Hidden Processor, that Elliot had this a breakdown at the Queen Museum where he was yelling at staff members, asking them where a certain individual was, and they couldn't see him, but he could see that person. And Ellie doesn't remember having that moment. He also doesn't remember the three days of missing and what really happened to Ty- Tyrell Wellick. So there's these periods and gaps in time that he does not remember. And for the longest time, we assumed that that was the case that uh, Mr. Robot was taking over. But there's a stronger and increasing case. There might be a third personality. And what I mean by that, the original Elliot. The Elliot that we may have the scene in that meeting in Halloween, on Halloween night, that was a bit more mellow, a little despondent, you know, really, a little depressed, if you will. But it's not as, it seems to be as focused individual as Elliot that we see. And also not as completely angry like Mr. Robot. Uh, and why a lot of people go with this theory that there might be a third personality is the fact that the first season Elliot didn't remember that Darlene was his sister. The first season, Elliot did not, when he went to look for his life experiences, could not find any tangible information about himself online, or even within his apartment, really. And when he finally did have that revelation that Mr. Robot, the person he's been talking to, and when he could see, uh, he began to see different parts of memories of, of his existence, in particular the fact that his Darlene was his sister, and Darlene was in these pictures and part of his life. So there, there's reason to believe that perhaps there was an original Elliot. An Elliot that was a a composite, if you will, or the, the some parts of the, the two individuals we've been watching on Mr. Robot, Mr. Robot, the television show, Mr. Robot, the character, and Elliot, the 
the hacker than we were following. And this might have been a deliberate part on the part of Elliot to be able to enact uh, the SSID plan. To be able to go through this plan. If he was able to do what needed to be done, he needed to be totally committed and totally focused. And so he exercised the parts out of himself that were hindrances. I um, mean, the, the, the social ties that he had to Darlene, um, being focused at, as, as her as being a family member. Because if he did that, if he had to care about Darlene, if he had to focus on Darlene and try to rescue Darlene, then he wouldn't be able to enact the plans that he needed to do because he was de definitely putting Darlene in danger. And we know this by what has happened in the aftermath of stage two. We started remembering that Elliot kind of deviated from his prison plan, if you will, to get rid of uh, Mr. Robot by trying to rescue Darlene because he had that emotional tie and connection. Um, he may have de deviated a little bit from the plan, if you can say. Um, getting rid of Mr. Robot, getting back into the game, if you will. So that was a reason why perhaps the original Elliot did that. The other thing is the clue that Angela stated that, you know, were you talking to your to your dad or are you talking to someone else? And this is something that a lot of people have pointed out that there seems to be certain personality in, uh, inconsistencies with Elliot as a person with his interactions, in particular with his interaction with um, Shayla, the girlfriend from that uh, from last season, how. He, he, the person with significant social anxieties, doesn't like to be touched, doesn't like to interact with people. Doesn't mean that he's not capable of making uh, social bonds, but the nature of the way his relationship and interaction with Shayla, it seems like he may have been having different types of conversations and different types of interactions with her that were not necessarily Mr. Robot doing the interactions, but maybe it was a different Elliot interacting with her. She even spoke to him like, you know, that they had conversations. They had a full-on conversation in his uh, hospital when he um, fell and was taken to the hospital, and he didn't remember. And it wasn't very apparent that it might have been Mr. Robot that was having that conversation. It could have been a different element. And the reason why that's important is because if you think of it on the sense that, of you know, the traditional sense of how characters are wrote down in movies and books, like the super ego, ego and id, with... Um, the very hyper focused hacker uh, aspect of personality would be uh, the Elliot that we see, the hacker Elliot. The ego would be the controlling factor of the original Elliot, and the id would be Mr. Robot. But if you think of the sense of a, com of a computer, where you would have administrator, a guest login, which would be Mr. Robot, and then a normal. Um, a normal password, a normal access person, and Elliot would be the normal access person to the computer system. Someone who has complete access to the computer system to a point, you know, operating system, except for significant fundamental changes that only an administrator could do. Mr. Robot, as a guest, can do this, many of the same things as um, the original Elliot can do, or not the original Elliot, but the Elliot, normal Elliot can do, the, the hacker Elliot. But he, too, can't doesn't have administrative control. He doesn't have the complete control to either erase things or completely control Elliot. I mean, Mr. Robot made that attempt, but couldn't do it. As the, as the, guest, as the, the game of chess proves, they are one and the same. They can't defeat one another. They're both of the same halves of the same coin, basically. And because of that, because they both cannot completely control uh, one another or can have complete access to... You can say um, the whole Elliot. Um, you can almost have a sense that um, there could be a third party in play here. And I always thought, and I, it was something going back to last season, that maybe Holo friend wasn't really the audience, if you per se, but the friend might have been the the original Elliot persona. Like he's checking in with that persona, he's talking to that persona, he's talking, still talking to himself, if you will. More so than his usual talking to himself. Uh, he's taking that and manifest that into a, a personality, a, a voice, if you will. And it can explain a number of things. It can explain the, the gaps in time. The fact that maybe even Mr. Robot doesn't know what stage two is. Uh, the fact that he's included in Elliot on that gives an indication that he doesn't know what stage two is. 
that he doesn't even know what happened to Tyler Wellick, and maybe the reason why he lied to Elliot is because he doesn't know. So he's trying to protect Elliot because he too may have been not present for those three days. And if that's the case, then it kind of shows you the level of psychosis that uh, Elliot as an individual is at, but also kind of, I don't, I'm not going to go as far as sociopathic or narcissistic, but obviously there is a very dark streak within Elliot. The fact that he cut Darlene out of his existence and erased her from his memory, if you will, so he can enact this plan for our society. That he has um, created an entire persona, if you will, with Mr. Robot to be more aggressive and more um, forthright in order to enact uh, certain aspects of his plan. And the fact that this stage two that he never informed Darlene about doesn't very bode well in general for him as a character. Like I said, in one the previous theory episode, uh, Theory's Theory said, it may turn out that Elliot in all of this could end up being the bad guy. I mean, he may have gone in with um, great intentions into freeing society and starting this revolution, but revolutions are bloody. Revolutions are ugly. There's a lot of death in revolution. We've already seen that already with Romero being dead, uh, Moby and Trinity being missing, uh, Gideon getting killed, uh, murdered, if you will. Uh, the was it the parking attendant guy getting killed by Darren Wellick? You know, bodies are dropping. Uh, people are hurting. People are burning trash because they can't pay for pickup. Uh, the people don't even know if they own their own home. Uh, they don't know where their next meal is going to be. If you will, it's getting really rough out there in the world. That Elliot was trying to save the people that he's trying to free are in fact hurting. You can see that in the streets. I wouldn't be surprised towards the end of this season if we see some um, either a riot or some type of violent action as a byproduct of what has happened. Even more so than the violent actions we've seen with uh, Cisco most likely in our case being dead and Darlene being severely injured or not dead herself. So there is a bit of a coldness, if you will, with original Elliot and his design for this plan and his breaking up of his personality or his creating this, these personas so he can enact this plan. The other kind of clue was the dream sequence from last season where the dream version of Angela spoke to Elliot and said, gave him a key and he's wondering what the key was and she was trying to tell him that he was only a month old. And then there was something very inaudible, like she said something, but he couldn't hear it. And then he eventually woke up. And a lot of people took that as a clue to indicate that Elliot himself, the, the Elliot that we see, the hacker Elliot, uh, was created. That he does not exist. He's not a real person. He is this persona. And that the original Elliot is controlling him as well as Mr. Robot in a sense. That maybe those missing days, those missing times, a lot of it is not just Mr. Robot, it's the original Elliot taking over and doing what needs to be done because the hacker Elliot doesn't have the skill set to do it or doesn't have the necessary information to get what needs to be done done. And also a lot of this, you know, splitting up his personality, splitting, splitting up the persona, also protects him because Elliot, but because he doesn't know what all of that is going on, all that information, if he was ever caught, if you, if you were to say, much similar in the fashion that he went into prison, he would be able to maintain the illusion and maintain a sense of innocence, if you will, and not reveal it, anything because he doesn't know anything, depending on which persona gets caught, whether it be Mr. Robot, uh, the hacker Elliot, if you will, wouldn't know anything, and original Elliot can remain hidden uh, behind the curtain, if you will, and, and not be caught in a sense, not have to deal with the consequences, maybe living in that kind of a, the 90s-esque sitcom our world, if you will, instead of dealing with the reality around him. So that's it. That's just my thoughts. I think that we're going to see perhaps uh, something to the effect of a third personality showing up 
They might be original to Mr. Elliot. It might be something completely different. But it'll be, um, I'm just looking forward to the season finale. Again, that's being broken up into two parts, uh, with the first part this week and the second part next week. But it'll be interesting to see whether or not, uh, I think enough has been seeded through this season and last season for a, a third personality to be revealed for that revelation to perhaps come, come about now. So that's pretty much it. That's the very thought. Uh, this is my thoughts on the whole subject matter. Um, I'll have a link in the show notes of a couple of Reddit posts that kind of delve into the third personality of Elliot. Uh, but that's it for now. Uh, the next episode you'll hear from me will be about the Washington uh, Township Plant Fairies. So logging off for now. Thank you for joining us on this chat. You can find us on all podcast outlets such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, MixCloud, and any podcast catcher. You can reach us on Twitter at FSocietyIRC, our website at FSocietyIRC.xyz. You can email us at FSocietyIRC at ProtonMail.com. Our music attributes are under the Creative Commons license number three. The intro music is by Monk. The song is called The Planet Shakers, The Paragraph Remix. Our outro music is by Trevet Halbeka, and the song is Zelta Kaba, as well as Kwana, and the song is Demons. You can support the show either via the QR code in the show notes by contributing with a Bitcoin or through PayPal, and there's a link in the show notes where you can PayPal me under Hiroja Shai. If you're very into uh, cryptocurrency, you can also tip me through a chain chip at Hiroja or at one name at Hiroja. Thank you very much for listening and look forward to hearing from you. Logging off. This has been a Hiroja Shad Space Odyssey Network production. <laughs>